So, all things considered, I still think I'm fairly new to Linux. I reckon I've been using Linux for about nine-ish months or so. I'm not exactly sure on the exact amount, but nine-ish months sounds about right. So, I'm still fairly new. And what I wanted to talk about today was the problems that I had when I first switched to Linux and the reason why I guess it took me so long to actually switch over. So, if you're new to the channel, you know what to do and let's jump right into it. I think the main thing that was really confusing me back when I was first thinking of switching was all of the choice that's available. So not just the distro choice where you have Arch and then you have all of the different versions of Arch. You've got Manjaro, Arco, Parabola, Arch Labs, everything like that. And then you've got Debian with Ubuntu, Pop! OS, MX Linux, Mint, all of that sort of stuff. And then just don't get me started on A to Z Ubuntu. When a user coming from Windows looks at all this, at least for me, when I saw this, I had no idea what I was looking at. And really, for a lot of these distros, there's not really much of a distinction between them. Say, if you're on Manjaro, you can switch over to Arco, and you're probably not going to notice basically any different. Maybe you have a different desktop environment, but the general usage of it, like you're still going to have Pac-Man, and you're still going to have all of the basic GNU utils, and it's still going to operate as basically the same distro, but it's going to have a different name. And... What I didn't understand when I first was switching was that most of those different names don't really matter. Now, I know someone who's like a big Manjaro fanboy or a big Arco fanboy or even a big Arch fanboy is probably going to say, oh, but there's tons of difference between these two. For someone who's really new to Linux, and this is how it was for me, it really doesn't matter. So I switched to Arch when I first switched over from Windows. And if I switched over to Manjaro, if I switched over to Arco, maybe if I switched over to one of the Debian distros, it'd be a bit different. But if I switched to any of the other Arch sort of distros, I wouldn't have really noticed a difference because when you're first switching, the main thing you're concerned about is trying to get used to it. And the important distinction between the distros isn't whether it's Arch based, whether it's Debian based or anything like that. It's whether it's a rolling release or it's not a rolling release. Those are the two big distinctions that actually matter, not whether it's Arch based or whether it's Ubuntu based or anything like that. It's whether you are going to have a set release or whether you're going to have a rolling release. So that's why distro choice confused me. I just didn't really have an understanding of what these different distros meant and the fact that it just didn't really matter. And then we go over to like desktop environment or window manager choice. So just making a distinction between desktop environment or window manager is hard enough. But then if you've decided on using one or the other, then you've got tons and tons of choice in both those categories. So for desktop environments, you have things like GNOME, uh, KDE, XFCE, Cinnamon, LXD, uh, LXQT, or for window managers, you have i3, DWM, BSPWM, Awesome, Qtile, and a bunch of others. And I don't think that for a lot of these, there's really enough content out there to explain what the differences are. Now, I know someone's probably going to say, oh, just read the man page or just read the manual. But I don't think doing that really gives you a good idea of the differences between these different systems. Because if I say read the man page for KDE and compare it with the man page for like F XFCE, you don't really have a good understanding of what's different between these two. Now, there's a lot of comparisons between the desktop environments for sure, but when it comes to the window managers, which is what I was more interested in, I don't think there's really a lot of content comparing them. Like, there's lots of standalone i3 content, lots of standalone DWM content, lots of standalone BSPWM content, but there's not a lot of, like, what does DWM do better than i3? What does i3 do better than BSPWM? What does BSPWM do better than DWM? And because there wasn't really those comparisons out there, I was really confused about what any of this actually meant and whether it even mattered really. And then you could even go over to like terminal choice, where there's like URXVT, Kitty, Alacruti, Xterm, ST. In the end, it really doesn't matter which terminal you picked. But as someone who's looking at this from a complete outsider perspective, I had no idea what I was looking at. I think I eventually settled on URXVT when I first switched over, and that's just because it was in the standard repos and it was easy to install. I didn't understand at all what the differences between these terminals were, and that's part of the reason why I'm doing this channel, because I do want to explain what some of these different things are. So the next one was about replacing software. So I was already using a bunch of open source software that's already available on Linux. I think for video editing, I was using OpenShot. For image editing, I was using GIMP. And a lot of other stuff I was using was already on Linux. But there was some stuff I was using where I wasn't really sure about the replacements or I'd heard really bad things about the replacements. So 
For my PDF reader, I was using Sumatra PDF on Windows because it's one of the few good PDF readers. And then when I switched over to Linux, I started using Zathura. Now, Zathura is a perfectly fine program. I have no problems with it. But the main problem I was going to have was with my Office suite. So obviously, I was on Windows, so I was using Microsoft Office. But when I switched over to Linux, I'd heard a lot of bad things about compatibility between Microsoft Office and LibreOffice. It turns out that now isn't really true. Most of the compatibility issues come from font issues, but I still had literally no idea whether this would be the case or not. I just heard so many bad things about LibreOffice's compatibility that I wasn't sure if this was going to be a good replacement because at the time I was in my third year of uni. So I needed something that was rock solid and I had no idea whether that would be the case when I switched over to Linux. So, along with that, I had a misconception about the difficulty of using Linux. So, I'd used Ubuntu a little bit, but it was kind of just following along with a tutorial that I had in um, one of my uni classes. So, it wasn't really using Ubuntu. So, I didn't really have a proper understanding of what it was like to use the shell, what it was like to use a tiling window manager, anything like that. So, when I was planning the switch over, I didn't really know... Was it going to be way more difficult? Was it going to be easier? Is my com workflow going to completely change? Am I going to be using the terminal more? Things like this. I had no idea what was going to happen. All I knew was that it was going to be different and it's pretty normal to be afraid of change. So I was kind of worried whether I'd be able to actually get all my uni assignments done and all that sort of stuff done. But obviously when I switched over, it turns out that Linux is actually dead simple. So... I didn't really have that difficulty, but coming from someone who's only ever used Windows 10 and a bit of Mac OS, it makes sense that I would be afraid of what was actually going to happen in my workflow and whether I'd be able to get stuff actually done on my new operating system. So even though I was afraid of how my workflow was going to change, it wasn't like I was jumping into Linux completely blind. I was watching Luke Smith, and I was watching DistroTube, and I was watching, um, what's his name, Infinite Galactic, and a bunch of these other channels. So I wasn't jumping in completely blind, but I did know that my workflow was going to change. And the problem with watching these channels is that I wanted to know everything about Linux before I swapped over. So I was watching, I think I watched videos like that for like a year, maybe a half or so. And I just kept watching more and more of these videos and I realized eventually that you're not going to learn everything about Linux before you switch to Linux. So at some point I decided, okay, I actually have to make the dive into Linux if I'm going to do this because if I'm just going to keep watching videos on it, yeah, you can keep learning stuff. But what I realized when I actually switched was that I learned more in like my first week or two weeks of using Linux than I did in those entire year and a half because... Unlike those videos, what I'm doing now is I'm actually experiencing what's happening. So something breaks. Say, for example, an early problem I had was with Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi is a known issue on Arch. You can get it working just fine if you know what you're doing. The problem is I didn't know what I was doing. So I kind of went through the installation process and forgot to install Wi-Fi Manager or wi whatever it's called. Network Manager Applet. I think it's called Network Manager. And I forgot to do the Network Manager Applet as well. So I got to my installation. I got like to my desktop with i3 installed and I didn't have Wi-Fi. So I actually had to plug the installation media back in because I don't actually have an Ethernet port on this laptop. And I didn't have a USB Ethernet card either, so I didn't really have that solution at hand. So I had to go back to the installation media, get Network Manager installed, and set it up like that because otherwise I just wasn't going to have Wi-Fi. And, and I didn't have any idea what was happening. It, in the end, that was the solution, but I spent maybe two hours trying to work it out. I was like, did I forget something else? I tried to go through dialogue to do stuff. I tried to do various other means. And in the end, it was a really simple solution. But because I had no idea what it was, I ended up trying out all this other stuff and I learned a bunch of stuff along the way. And that's just with that one problem. I could talk for hours on end about all of the little problems I had when I was first switching to Linux and how much that actually helped me learn what I'm doing on this computer. And because of that, as I was saying, I learned so much more within those first couple of weeks of using Linux than I did in that first year and a half. So if you are thinking of switching to Linux and you were in the same boat as me, just make the switch because you're not going to learn everything about Linux before you actually start using it. And the last thing I have to say is that at the time, I didn't like Windows 10. I don't think there's anyone who likes Windows 10, but I was, I guess, I was comfortable on the OS. So yes, it had its problems. It had tons of problems. Yes, it was tracking everything you did, 
but it wasn't so bad that I needed to leave. It was kind of something that I could keep putting off and putting off and putting off. So because Windows 10 wasn't so insufferably bad, I kind of dealt with it for way longer than I should have. I know better now, and if I knew what I knew now, I would have switched probably in the first couple of days. But at the time, I didn't really have a problem with it. It's not like I was playing games or anything, so I didn't really have that problem. But I just didn't have anything about Windows that was really bothering me so much that I just had to leave it. But maybe you're in the same boat and you're still kind of thinking about switching. I would say just stop putting it off if you do want to switch, because it's not going to get any easier if you take longer to switch. So that was my story about switching to Linux. So let me know what you guys think, and I guess if you suffered some of the same problems when you first were switching, or maybe you, when you switched over, you had no problems whatsoever. Maybe you were just super into everything. You actually knew everything about Linux. You swapped over to Gen 2 and you were like perfectly fine and you had no problems whatsoever. I don't think that's gonna be the case for anyone who's not a liar, but maybe it is. So let me know what your story is down below and hey, maybe your story can help someone out as well. So if you like this video, then remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm now aiming for 10,000 subs and any help be really appreciated. Up on that corner, I've got the playlist of videos in, so go check that out if you want to see other videos like this. Down below, I've got my social links, so go check that out if you want to see my Discord, my Telegram, and all of that sort of stuff. So go check that out if you want to chat with me or you want to get video updates. I've also got my support links down below, so that'll be my Patreon and various other links like that. So feel free to support the channel if you do want to, but as always, if you don't want to support the channel, then you obviously don't have to do it. And lastly, I've got my alternate video platforms. So that'll be my BitTube and my library. So go check those out if you want to see my videos on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I don't know if you would have noticed it while I was recording, but my voice is a little bit croaky. So after yesterday's podcast where I was recording by myself for an hour, I kind of had a bit of a sore throat. That was entirely my fault because I haven't actually tried to talk by myself for an hour straight before. So... Hopefully it doesn't come off too bad in this video. I don't think it was too bad I I kind of had to cut a bit along the way because I had to cough But but hopefully it'll be better by tomorrow and maybe you guys didn't even notice if I didn't put it out. So Anyway, I think that's pretty much everything for this video and I'm out